Hello. I love villains. I think we all do. You've got legends like the Joker, Darth Vader, OJ. Say this or not, but we have seen... Uh... But none of them come close to this thing. The Penguin from Wallace and Gromit. If you haven't seen Wallace and Gromit The Wrong Trousers, do yourself a favor, it's only 30 minutes on Prime Video, and if you don't have that, well, one, two, three movies always comes in clutch. I remember watching it as a kid and being absolutely captivated by it. I would watch it occasionally throughout the years, and upon watching it recently as an adult, I realized its brilliance is because they crafted the perfect villain for the show. So today, we're going to explore the three ways this movie builds the Penguin up as an antagonist, finishing with how all three of them come together for the climax. First impressions are everything. You look at the way villains get their introduction in other media, and they all try to establish an intimidating presence. Whether it's done by virtue of scale, or by subverting expectations. No matter what the script calls for, these stories are trying to make the entrance of this villain memorable. Contrast this to the introduction of the Penguin, Feathers McGraw, who is instead introduced with the absence of presence. When Wallace lets Feathers McGraw into the house, we aren't given a shot of the character. Rather, the camera focuses on Gromit's reaction, and when we see Feathers through Gromit's eyes, we don't. Grummet misses the penguin and has to draw his eyes down to get a full view of our villain. The beady, expressionless eyes reinforce that theme of absence. They don't hint at some sadistic nature or horrific past. They reveal nothing. This character exudes terror because he represents a fear deep inside all of us, the unknown. The character can stare right into your soul, but looking back, we can't tell if there is a soul. We as the audience can't get a read on the character, and neither can Gromit. Feathers McGraw remains mysterious even among the two other silent antagonists in Wallace and Gromit. The animation in the Grand Day Out exaggerates the hand movements of the robot to convey its thoughts and feelings, and the very design of Preston instantly conveys his bully persona. When villains such as these are introduced as an imposing threat, they can be trusted by the audience to oppose the protagonist. I'm the protagonist. But in the case of Feathers McGraw, we can't trust anything about the character, and thus we put our own insecurities upon this penguin, just as Gromit does. This introduction succeeds because it immediately intrigues us while also instilling fear. But there is one other introduction here that I'm forgetting. The Wrong Trousers are given the traditional intimidating presence in its introduction not once, but twice. First in the title card, and second when Wallace gifts it to Gromit. Now the reason this introduction is important is because it shows the trousers as intimidating. We are told how to feel about this technology. Afraid. So when the movie reveals the Penguin as a definitive villain, he turns to reveal that he is now in control of those trousers. It conveys McGraw not only as smart and cunning, but in a league above other villains. Too often are villains shown to be either unstoppable forces of nature or bumbling fools every step of the way. It is in this relationship to conflict that the Penguin once again stands out. In the rising action of the story, we see Feathers plan out and execute the heist of a diamond. The scenes prior showcase our villain as smart, cunning, and competent. But in this heist scene, we get to see Feathers as vulnerable. We see him struggle. There are multiple turning points in the heist that keep you on the edge of your seat and push the limits of our villain. He struggles to grab the diamond and triumphs. He struggles to escape, but wins. Feathers McGraw succeeds in the end, but not without some roadblocks. In contrast, when a villain is shown to fail consistently, we know that the villain will fail again at the climax. Look at villains like Megatron, Skeletor, or Bowser. These are such egregious examples of this. No doubt they're great characters, but they've just become straw men to throw at our protagonists. In contrast, when a villain is shown to get their way at every turn in the story, we doubt their ability to succeed at the climax because we see them struggle for the first time. Take Loki in the Avengers. This character gets his way at every turn in the story. But at the climax, as soon as our heroes band together, Loki no longer poses any serious threat. The film realizes this, which is why it takes all the focus away from him and towards the Chitari. 
In the case of Feathers McGraw, we see him struggle and earn his first victory. It gets us to relate to our antagonists, and it builds the most effective tension for the finale. Let's take a look at each turning point in the story and watch how our protagonists react. Number one, the inciting incident. Wallace has bad finances, therefore he puts up a room to let. Number two, crisis. Feathers McGraw makes Gromit's life a living hell, therefore Gromit decides to leave Wallace. Number three, first culmination. Gromit is unable to make it on his own, and he sees that Wallace is in trouble. Therefore, he decides to investigate the penguin. Number four, climax. Feathers McGraw locks Wallace and Gromit in a closet and finally leaves them alone. But Wallace and Gromit decide to stop him. See, the first three turning points of the story show our protagonists as reactionary. Renting out a room was caused by financial insecurity. Gromit leaves Wallace as a result of the penguin ruining his life. And Gromit investigating the penguin is a result of being homeless and missing an old friend. And in all three of these examples, Feathers McGraw is either the source of these reactions or the one who profits from them. But at the climax, the actions of our protagonists are proactive. Wallace and Gromit could have just let Feathers McGraw leave and all would be well, but they decide to stop him, together. The story shows our heroes being forced to move at every step of the way until the climax, where our heroes are the ones who get in the way. Now let's take a look at how all three of these elements combine for the finale. The final action scene is fucking insane. This film manages to make a man and his dog chasing a penguin on a toy train one of the most intense action sequences put to screen, and it is because of all three of those elements we discussed earlier coming together. Since the very introduction of this villain, you have been disturbed. The absence of a soul in this character has been haunting you throughout the film, and now it's been given a gun. But the scene doesn't instantly gratify you. It's a constant tug of war. Feather shoots a hole in the door to escape, but Gromit switches the track. Wallace snatches the gun, but is thrown off the train. Gromit crawls to the front of the train, but Feathers detaches the car. It keeps you on the edge of your seat because it mirrors the high sequence from earlier, a pattern of danger and subversion. And to top it all off, beating Feathers McGraw is so compelling because it will mark the first truly proactive actions in our protagonists, signifying change and growth in our heroes. Ah, uh, I sure do love Wallace and Gromit. But wait, I let the penguin into my house! <laughs>